what's up fellas T27 here just another update been watching a lot of videos trying to catch up on everyone so first thing I wanna answer some of the questions that were given out by Warboss Tay so here we go so number one um, non-related hobby well I like to swim a lot I like to go exploring into the wilderness and the in the forests and go hiking and uh, actually go ferry hunting because up here in Washington there's a lot of uh, like kind of wetland forest jungle type of terrain and uh, you see a lot of cool um, stumps and logs and, and little streams and there you um, you, you just get this feeling like there's uh, there's fairies there or gnomes I come across some gnome homes so yeah I like to take the kids fairy hunting that's uh, one of my side hobbies and second my very first model well unfortunately my very first model is not here with me I started painting a lot of uh, Reaper miniatures for for my Dungeon and Dragon campaigns. So um, always painted a miniature for my character. But I do have my first Warhammer miniature painted, and um, I got it right here. So let's take a look what we got here. I'm going to cut it. So here is my very first Warhammer miniature painted by me. Um, the only thing different about him, I kind of gave him a little bit of, of an update, um, is the base. I used to just paint my base goblin green and that's it. No flop, nothing. Just goblin green. But anyway, I used him as a D&D uh, &D character. Uh, Thorgrim Ironfriss was his name. And uh, he was a lot. He was just like a Dwarven peasant. And then a Dwarven farmer became a fighter, barbarian. Um, then he became a merchant, and he was selling pigs at the market because he started riding pigs as uh, his mount, and uh, and then he just had a death wish and became a slayer. So that that's when I um, decided to um, buy this model. And I thought he was cool and I started buying a lot more Warhammer miniatures before I even knew what the game was. And then I got into it, I looked into it, and my friend and I bought a um, box set. Uh, it was the Bretonian Lizardman. I gave him all my Bretonians and I kept the Lizardman. And then I lost it all. But I kept on buying doors. And I had a dwarf army. <laughs> so yeah, this was my uh, very first Warhammer miniature painted. Tell me what you guys think. There she is. Kyrie girl. Baby number three. My third addition to the family. She got two older brothers. So two questions down and we have the third question. How old was I when I started the hobby? Well, I got into D and D when I was about eleven and I played that maybe up till I was uh twelve or thirteen and discovered Warhammer from uh from the miniature I bought four D&D &D, and 
Yeah, so I was probably about 13 or so when I um, started getting into the Warhammer world. Uh, me and my buddy used to um, play these battles on the living room floor for hours and hours and hours till our um, till we couldn't even stand up. <laughs> our, our our legs and back or, and neck was so sore. We used to just go all out. I mean, just slaughter the last model on the battlefield. We we didn't really play by the rules. We had our own uh, set of rules. We didn't even do any um. Uh, what do you call it? Um, psychology test or anything, or no um, combat resolution. We just we just fought. We <laughs> we played so far beyond the rules. It was um, unreal. But yeah, so I was about thirteen when I got into the hobby. Okay, so question number four. My best memory that I have. That involves around wargaming or role playing. I would have to say when I was 13 years old, I would um, cut school, meet up with my friend, and we would uh, go to his house because his parents weren't working, and we would have these uh, D and D games, and they would last for a long time. We'd play them all day long, and then some. And then on the weekends, it would go into the night, and we were just. Uh, just crazy about D and D. We would literally be on the bus or anywhere, just um, playing the game. Just the story part of the game, not the dice rolling. But it, it, it would get so fun that we'd be like, "Oh, okay, we have to dis discontinue the story right here. And we have to get back to the house and roll some dice." And that's what we did. We just uh, just played constantly, and it's like it got to the point where like we were. We weren't even ourselves anymore. We were the characters. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so we were just cutting school and playing D&D. &D. And uh, yeah, the school ended up calling our parents and uh, asking why we weren't in school. And our parents got really upset and they questioned us about our attendance. And we just said, hey, you know. We can learn so much more playing D&D than the stuff they teach us in school. Yeah, I mean, we've been looking in history books and looking at medieval battles and, and we're, we were doing so much math, rolling the dice, we were reading and coming up with stories and, and being creative and, and painting. And we we're just utilizing our brain, you know, and, um, uh, our parents, uh, well, my parents, I don't know about his, but my parents uh, thought it was pretty cool, you know, how, how I was putting it. And she's, my mom just said, um, well, if you're going to ditch school, you know, you, don't be roaming the streets or anything because you can get busted for truancy. So, you know, she let, she, she let me stay home from school every now and then and uh, my friend would come over and we would do the same thing as D and D out. A lot of fun. Yeah, those are probably one of my great memories of uh, in uh, this hobby. Okay, question number five. Best sci-fi movie. I would have to say Twelve Monkeys. That is my favorite sci-fi movie. It's probably my favorite movie of all times. I can watch that movie over and over and over just because it has something to do with time travel and, and time traveling is kind of confusing and you think you can like you know solve it or you know understand time traveling but it just doesn't seem to work you know <laughs> and that's one thing about that movie it's you know you they think they're gonna change the future, but it just ends up happening anyway. It's just the way it goes. It's just faith. It's just the way uh, God plans it, and they just get stuck in a cycle in this time warp, and 
and it's just confusing. <laughs> But I love it, the acting, the, the way it was filmed, uh, just great flick. If you haven't seen 12 Monkeys, you should see it and watch it over and over again until you understand time traveling. <laughs> but, yep, 12 Monkeys. Okay, question number six, what is my favorite army? I'm going to go with the Orcs and Goblins. They're just full of character. They're... they're really fun to paint, they're funny, they're full of wah, they're green, mean, fighting machines, uh, they're not much of a competitive army though, but that's the reason why I like playing them, because when I play games, I like to have fun, I mean, I like to win too, but losing is not like a big deal to me so and the main thing I like to have fun with my opponent so if he sees crazy things happening to my own army um, he gets a kick out of it I get a kick out of it everyone is happy and having fun and that's the main thing and that's why I like orcs and goblins they're just unpredictable they're really strong when when everything falls through with them but if all else fails, it's a disaster. <laughs> you know, they got a lot of cool minis too. And, you know, the squigs and and you know the snarling pump wagons. It's it's a very fun army. And it's very easy to convert things into the army because it's like just pretty much trash, rubbish, you know? So yep, yeah, orcs and goblins. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, my favorite model painted. We're gonna cut this and we're gonna check it out. There she is. Hi, Kyrie. Hi, baby. <laughs> Yay. So, here's Daddy's, uh, Favorite painted model, War Zag. The savage orc shaman is doing his little skanking dance. And I look at him, I just picture his uh his staff just rattling like a rain stick. <laughs> I built this little hut for him, for his squig, his pet squig, and he's just dancing on it. Yeah, yeah. He's my favorite. He's very fun. Okay, so the last question is, what army would I be in? I would say the dwarf army. Maybe a runesmith, perhaps, just because they, um, they're hard and sturdy, but yet they are very anti-magic, they hate magic, and they pretty much uh, equip all of the dwarves, at least all the lords and heroes of the dwarf army with magical runes on their weapons. So, yeah, I would probably want to be a runesmith or a rune lord, even better. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all the questions um, that were asked throughout the July painting challenge for more boss Tay. So I'm trying to catch up here. I've been watching some videos and I'm getting motivated from everybody posting. So um, let's see what I've done so far with the ancient scar leader here. All right, here's the ancient scar 
leader riding the giant lizard monster. I didn't do much. I uh, just added a bit more green stuff around his leg here, filling the gaps, and some green stuff on the bottom here. But I've been working mostly on this base. Um, whatever time I put into it, uh, I just put some Elmer's glue all around here because I'm going to do like a water effect make this kind of like an island sort of and some, some bark and you know some extra sand here to to elevate the um, the the ground and the water so yeah mostly just the base work I want the base to look real nice and pretty so yeah yeah, I was looking online um, at this toy here, the McFarland toy. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of made me a little disappointed because the toy is actually worth like a hundred forty bucks, <laughs> and I just kind of like mutilated him. And but oh well. Um, I'm gonna try and paint this this piece here very nicely. I'll take my time. Um, I want to make it real epic. So, yep, I'll probably start uh, doing some painting tomorrow. All right, guys. Um, I'm real happy to see everyone getting involved in this challenge a lot more than last year. And I look forward to um, catching up with more of the videos. Okay. You guys take it easy. And T27 is out.